Welcome to Smoke and Bulls, the podcast about business, money, and lifestyle. We're here with Peter Bowen to chat about his avocation in cycling. My name's Tyler. And I'm Dave. Let's get into it. Peter is an avid cyclist. It's what he does in his off time when he's not busy uh, working in his side of his business. Uh, so we'd like to learn more about cycling. I'm not a cyclist myself. I understand Peter's a, an avid cyclist. Uh, so let's uh, let's get into that conversation, Peter. Uh, how long have you been in, uh, interested in cycling? How long have you been cycling? Well, I've been doing it for almost longer than I care to admit, to be honest. But uh, you know, a good uh, 25 plus years. I got into it because I used to be a runner. And as happens with many runners, you run into knee issues. So yeah. I started doing some cycling to cross train and I, I just grew to, grew, grew to love it. So now it's the only exercise, pretty much the only exercise I do. And, and that's, I'm not saying that's healthy. <laughs> you should be doing more than one type of exercise. Certainly, I know that, but uh, it's my passion. and I, I really do uh, enjoy it. So as sort of a pure cyclist, I've been you know, literally 20, 25 years that I've been uh, riding as a, as a pure cyclist. And I, I do it almost every day, whether, you know, sometimes in my basement when the weather's lousy, but uh, today after work, uh, I will go outside. It's, it's nice enough. I was going to yeah. say, I'm glad you referenced it as a pure cyclist, because I was going to say, we're not going all the way back to when you were riding a tricycle in your parents' uh, driveway. <laughs> That's not the cycling we're no. talking about. <laughs> um, do you travel at all to cycle, or you just use it for exercise, or is it something where you, you organize trips around mm -hmm. it, or do you bring your bike with you on, on business travel, or you know how does that look in your life? So I really haven't taken my bike with me on business travel, but I do know a number of places across the country to rent road bikes. So oh, yeah. I've done that. Uh, numerous times. Uh, in terms of personal vacations, uh, yes, uh, you know, but for the fact we're in the pandemic, uh, I do an annual uh, cycling trip. Uh, my my wife is a saint, and I don't. Know, she always sends me off on these these <laughs> trips. Uh, she doesn't go with me on the on the on the cycling trips. Uh, but I've been to Europe uh, a number of ti times. Uh, you know, uh, Cape Breton, uh, places like that uh, where where we go and do a you know several cycling friends and we'll do a a week of cycling often where it's mountainous so uh yep you That's can great. build in What's travel been... and and cycling and, and yeah. there are family trips as well where i'll perhaps rent a bike for you know a day or two of it <laughs> my wife will still allow that <laughs> go for a run what's your what's your uh, closest call on the road oh in terms of accidents you mean yeah yeah, mm -hmm. I've I've had a, a few um, I've hit mm -hmm. the pavement a couple times, yeah. broken some ribs, um, mm -hmm. scraped off some skin. Uh, yeah. If you ride enough, that's it's not unusual to have that that happen. Uh, unfortunately, nothing nothing too serious though. And only yeah. the one hospital visit when I broke some ribs. So, oh boy! Okay. So I knock on wood, I won't have any more crashes. But I so that one sounded like you're doing, not somebody else's. <laughs> uh, it depends. It depends. Yeah. Uh, some yes, some no. Um, not, not that I have a lot of crashes. I haven't. But, uh, uh, yeah, it, it, it's a mix. <laughs> nice. So are you in a riding club at all? Or do you do you get together with a group of friends? Or do you, are you in a club or an organization of any sort? Or is it just yourself? Uh, I'm, I ride. I've got a couple of probably three groups, I would say, that I ride with. Uh, you know, one one is part of a big club, which is not active currently in the, in the pandemic. Uh, has over a thousand members in the Toronto area, actually. Um, wow. And I've got a much smaller wow. group that I ride with uh, regularly as well. Um, and these days, a lot of solo riding. Uh, during the week, at least, I'm doing solo riding. Uh, we're here in Ontario. We're actually discouraged from riding with others, although there's certainly small groups are are, are riding together. Uh, so, so in it's the a, it's a mix. in the winters, then a road bike on a you know with the the back wheels uh, on the rollers type setup. Is that what you do, or are you are you a Peloton type guy? I'm not a Peloton type guy. <laughs> uh, I have what what's called a smart trainer. So my uh, one of my road bikes, actually an old one that is broken that can't go on the road anymore. Just it's probably fine, but just in yeah. case, it's permanently ensconced in the basement on a smart trainer with what's called Zwift as a subscription, um, and uh, it it's actually really rev revolutionized the indoor cycling uh, for many many cyclists such as myself and made it much more interesting to be stuck in the basement riding. Um, but it, even in the winter, there are some days when I'll get outside. I've got, uh, I've got several bikes, one of which is essentially a winter bike. And, uh, 
you know, as long as it's, as long as it's not too cold and the, the roads are clear, I'll, I'll go outside on weekends at least. Nice. That's good. Well, uh, we, we talked a little bit cause I've decided maybe I'm going to try riding, riding, well, riding in the fall and the winter versus riding in the summer. Uh, cause I golf in the summer. I'd rather do that and get my walking in that way. But, uh, so, you know, uh, just interestingly enough, uh, you know, you get your pop-ups on your LinkedIn and all that. And somebody who we had, uh, worked with in the past, who was, uh, worked at Canadian Western Trust has started a bicycle company. So I just interested in, okay, electric bikes. I want to see, I, I haven't, I've heard of them, but I really didn't know much about them. So I, I clicked on it and, and, uh, holy smokes, it's, that is, that's going down a rabbit hole. I didn't realize there's so many different electric bikes, so much different options. You know, I, I'm not an avid cycler like you are, but I used to ride to work every once in a while, but I always found I was, I was riding uphill on the way home and into the wind. And I was not happy to be going home at that point. So I'm thinking, boy, if I got some assist from a little bit of an electric motor, I mean, yeah, you know, if I'm a really bad day, it's like, turn it on full and let's, let's go home type thing. So <laughs> it's a, it's a. A rapidly growing area of the cycling industry. Uh, absolutely, it's a, uh, uh, yeah, it's wonderful. Right? It's getting more people out, enjoying the outdoors, uh, couples riding together, uh, whatever the, the 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 advantage that's being it being used for. Uh, yeah, if you got to go, go uphill into the wind at the end of the day, I, I get that's a grind. And if you can have yeah. a little bit of assist on that, that's great. Right. Yeah. So, um, you're get still getting some uh, getting some exercise. Oh, I was back in my day. They were called shorter. mopeds. I don't know now. There's electric bikes. So. Yeah, look at this one. <laughs> look at this uh, bike. It looks awesome. Yeah, I don't know if you can see you that. You still have to pedal it, right? Yeah, you still <laughs> yeah you still have to pedal it. I, yeah, the the one that I had looked at, it was like a oh, I can't even remember. It was all wheel drive. There you go. Like both a motor on both uh, tires. So yeah. I I'm sure that could. This is what it's uh, one of these things here, a mammoth or whatever. So Vamoose, Vamoose cycling. So uh, I actually, I'm test driving one tomorrow morning uh, down Excellent. in the River Valley. So uh, if this is my last podcast, we'll know what happened. <laughs> 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 I went down the wrong hill, up the wrong hill. Who knows? So I mean, you're you're a road you're a road biker, right? You're not really an off road type Correct. person. Yeah, yeah. I've done so a little you, bit of the off road, but uh, yeah, yeah, road biking, road cycling is my my. Yeah. what i enjoy the most i like going yeah. fast <laughs> there you go well, I, i'm, I'm going to look at it from a commuting point of view to maybe do a little bit uh get some exercise in with some commuting and have some assistance uh on making that uh happen so yeah it's uh i i can see i mean you know every like city of edmonton you know offered 700 bucks or 750 if you bought an electric bike i think their program got shut down after a month uh because i think they had you know a million dollar budget and that got burned in no time it's too popular yeah, yeah and i mean there's some yep. argument that well who can afford a 3500 dollars electric bike and i think well you know if they're the type of transportation that they can truly be that's maybe somebody who instead of buying a twelve thousand dollar small car they're buying a five thousand thirty five hundred dollar bike so just as much as you want them into a thirty thousand dollar electric car that you'll give them five grand for why not let them into a electric bike that's their way of commuting uh you're gonna unclog mm -hmm. a lot of roads so i it was interesting uh, that i think on a city level it's very hard with their budgets to support a whole program uh maybe on a you know a national or provincial level but uh it's that's a that's a beast unto itself giving credits to uh, get people to purchase things that they want you to purchase uh, for the environment or for climate change so sometimes that's a slippery slope when you're offering money for one thing and not the other it, so it is and uh, they they do have to look at a at the efficiency of those uh subsidies from a you know from a tax perspective from an economic perspective and often those subsidies are awfully expensive from a you know measure of yeah. emissions saved yeah well i think you know, you're in ontario i think they had a, a, a for a long time on the you know it was like tesla buying time and there was a lot of money going to tesla's uh what was it five grand or something at some point i think uh per car it was more than that at one point oh, yes. really? yeah it's crazy yeah. Uh, that that'll get you to maybe buy that over something else so so uh what's your advice then i guess uh you know we're to finish up with some cycling here but you know for someone getting into cycling maybe road cycling that's a bit more on your, your way it can be an expensive sport but it can be uh relatively inexpensive to get started at least to 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 taste it uh what, what would you recommend to somebody? Uh, well, these days it's f hard to find a bike, right? From mm -hmm. a, the, 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 because of the pandemic, the, the supply chains have been broken and they're, they're, they're slowly coming back to, to life. But uh, 
finding bikes in, in bike stores uh, in many parts of the country is, is actually very difficult. Uh, so the used bike market is is big. You know, I, I encourage people to you know just get a basic bike and try it for a few years, uh, get into it. Uh, you know, I was actually helping someone at work recently uh, acquire a bike, and he ended up buying quite a nice bike. I think because it was the only thing he could find in the like in the Toronto yeah. area that fit him. Yeah. But he wanted a bike. And uh, I think we're seeing a lot more people cycling these days. And yes, you can call it expensive. It can be expensive. Um, although you're, you, you golf, right? That's, that's equally, if not more expensive, right? Depending Paying on to go for a walk. You know, the equipment you're <laughs> buying and the, the greens fees and all that. Yeah. Um, so, you know, you put it in perspective and spending a bit of money on it. I, I always think it's a, it's a good investment to, because it's healthy and gets people out, outside. And as a sport, we, we've really seen it uh, exploding uh, in the last uh, year, especially, of course, as we're, we're cooped up uh, with the pandemic. Uh, we're right. seeing more and more people out on the road, which I, I love to see. That's awesome. Yeah, that's great. Well, that's awesome. Peter, I think that's a, a great uh, opportunity or a great way to share what your uh, passion is outside of work. So thanks for bringing us up to speed on cycling. And, and thanks again for sharing all of your time with us today. It's uh, very much appreciated. Uh, it's my pleasure. Thanks for having awesome. me on your show. Thanks for watching this episode of Smoke and Bulls, the podcast about business, money and lifestyle. You can learn more about us at smokeandbulls.com or follow us on social media.